You're brewing today, huh? Are you excited? You're not. I'm super excited to pour hot water on my finger and not react. <laughs> just uh, today is a, a, a tasting. Well, we're just gonna Do some have some ketchup and uh, uh, mustard while we taste <laughs> some um, tea. tea with relish. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're excited to taste some tea with you guys and just catch up on some tea topics. Mm -hmm. And the tea we're gonna taste today is some top grade aged Da Hong Pao from 2014. Yeah, this is a really awesome tea. We launched it exclusively at the Toronto Tea Festival, so they got first look at it, but it's now available to everybody on our website. So check out the link down below if you're interested in checking out that tea. Mm -hmm. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's get that kettle on. I'm, yes, yes. I might There's not say no... much when I'm brewing. Yes, I, I expect that. That's why this I was doing that. This is the gen show. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Don't forget to rinse them. Right. Usually gen brews, but... Um, I'm we... taking a break today. She's taking a break and I might be a little nervous because I don't usually brew on camera, especially when it's both of us. When I do the videos, it's different. Give the baby some water. I always give the baby some water. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to do my best. So... Um, Give me encouraging comments down below to help me do better in the future. <laughs> yeah, talking about uh, China and stuff, I think the cor coronavirus is a topic we cannot avoid now. Yeah, uh, it must be on everybody's mind. It's in the news everywhere. Yeah, and luckily all my friends and family, they're all fine. They're just, uh, you know, at home most of the time, but it seems okay there we're not in Hubei province it's not the center of the outbreak so um, lucky for us yeah definitely but you're probably wondering also how is this going to affect spring tea season because while it may be freezing cold up here in Ottawa and we're still buried in snow in the dead of winter in many parts of China spring is well underway mm. as is Some tea season early right, the early already. places the early places yeah they already started uh, some green tea plucking and some especially southern provinces there are mm -hmm. spots that are already harvesting uh, green teas and for sure that affects like huge in almost every industry you know because transportation is pretty, pretty much locked down right yeah. so uh, industrial transportation of goods is slowed uh, people cannot move around mm -hmm. so um, so there's less definitely less people travel there to buy the teas and uh, the resale is also slow just um, I think in, like other industries uh, tea also get great uh, negative impact from the virus but also another thing is because people cannot uh, go to provinces it's yeah, actually they can't travel right there's yeah. no interprovince travel right now yeah it actually affects the uh, pluckers a lot which means the high-end teas yield would definitely reduce in that case mm. uh, nobody plucks it so especially for high-end green teas it's definitely uh, a huge reduction yeah and yeah. i just want to come back to that a little bit because on the tea trips where i've been we, we've always bumped into fellow merchants who are traveling and sometimes we even travel for several days, we kind of become friends. So I knew the merchant travel would be impacted, which of course will impact the, the producer's ability to sell. But what surprised me and may be interesting to you guys out there a bit is, I always assumed that the villagers were mostly local, and I'm sure many of them are local, but this, the, a lot of the pluckers do travel to pluck tea. Um, and I guess because high-end tea, it's a skill, it's a rare skill. The situation is uh, the lack of plucker has been a chronic issue mm. in the Chinese uh, tea industry, especially for high-end tea where they have to use people, not the machines, right? right? And uh, it's a tough job and it's uh, so seasonal, you know, it kind of conflicts with some, if you want to feel in the rest of your time, it work work in the cities or stuff people don't want that temporary job right. it disturbs their schedule so less people are willing to do it and uh, that in general the price of the plucker goes up but still less people want to do it um, 
a lot of times, actually, the producers have to、um, hire people from other provinces, other places, to pluck the tea, and sometimes it's、um, hard to do it. Yeah, so we'll see how that plays out with the、um, in,、mm. in the high end teas. Yes, the funny thing is,、um, how shall I say?、Uh, <laughs> One of the producers I remember, she was so funny. She said,、uh, "It's a actually the Hubei was the province we visited in 2019, and there is very mountainous. The tea area is very mountainous, and because the tea pluckers are so in shortage." They hire anybody who would like to go there, even they are not pluckers before.、Right. Uh, the producers are willing to give them some trainings and get this started because they just need people to pluck. And、uh, she, what the producer said was,、uh, she doesn't hire people from、uh, Henan province. <laughs> the reason is funny though. It's not a, like a. a, a Uh, how do you say? Not racist. It's not arbitrary. Yeah, it's not just simple hate or something. The thing is because the Hubei province is very mountainous, and the Henan province is quite a plain. So people go there to pluck. They fall more like they're more likely to fall. And when they fall, that、uh, costs them time and money to, you know, get the health care and everything,、oh. and slow down the season. So they're like,、oh, we need some people who know how to walk in mountainous area. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So speaking of tea season,、um, the last two years, as many of you may know, we traveled to China to、um, to visit tea regions、mm-hmm. and producers. In and the spring. In the spring, and it's just by luck that this year,、um, actually, back in October, we were talking about we were doing some very early planning of this、uh, 2020 tea trip. And we both said, you know, we did two springs in a row, 2018, 2019. And don't get me wrong, it was totally awesome.、Um, but maybe this year we could try autumn because there's actually a, you know, there's lots going on with tea in the autumn as well, and see China in a different season, see a different phases. So we luckily, just by fate or whatever, just by like <laughs> because we were there the last two springs, we actually dodged this coronavirus bullet、yeah. in terms of our plans not getting disrupted because we had no plans to go this spring. Phew! Close one. Just luck. Since we're talking about a 2019 tea trip,、uh, exciting news is that、uh, our charter magazine is、uh, coming out Ooh, with、yeah. the latest issue on、um, this Friday, February the 21st. First. Yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, because it's a week after Valentine's Day. So、oh. yeah, super excited to drop that. Um, if you want to、uh, have access to that, head to our website and sign up to our email list. It's free access for everybody on the emailing list.、Mm-hmm. Um, that includes last year's issue and, the,、uh, more importantly, the upcoming this year's issue,、mm-hmm. packed with great articles.、Mm-hmm. Uh, and、um, we add、uh, some new future,、uh, new features to the magazine, improved uh, uh, viewing, viewing、yep. experience, and.、Uh, Uh, downloading options for your easy read on the road,、mm-hmm. so、uh, be sure to check this out. And、yeah. this is the very first、uh, tea trip that feels successfully、yes. complete the whole trip、yeah. without any sickness. That's right. So for those of you who don't know, my 2018 tea trip was still awesome, but it got cut quite short because I ended up having、uh, I ended up with a mild fever that just wouldn't go away. So I had to eventually. Head back to Beijing. This year we had a really packed trip. I、uh, did a ton of training before I headed out, walking up and down hills, bundled up like crazy here in Canada in February, trying to simulate the heat I was going to experience <laughs> while walking up and down hills five, seven, ten kilometers a day at a fast, fast pace. I got there. It worked like a charm. I was able to、uh, handle the time change, the temperature change, the、uh, everything. Yeah, and, and we planned it a little bit more like a、mm-hmm. thoughtful, especially when you just landed、yes. with the climate change, the time zone changes. Yeah. Yeah. One two days to really stick at one place and not move、yeah. was really helpful too. Yeah. Anyway, it worked out great.、Um, I think in total you hit like six provinces. I、mm-hmm. hit three provinces. We saw all kinds of different tea production. So. Definitely check out the magazine for an in-depth look at that、mm-hmm. adventure. Yes, we have some vlog already posted on、mm-hmm. the channel, but、uh, on the magazine, what we're trying to share is a little bit,、uh, how should I say, like a deeper thoughts, a little bit more,、uh, um, uh, a little bit more.、Um, 
Uh, deep. We're both struggling for the word, but um, as a deeper look, we get more into the details. And yeah, a little bit more details, a little mm -hmm. bit layer of uh, uh, rather than think simply talk about mm -hmm. one thing, we uh, share our thoughts and uh, kind of uh, be intriguing, like uh, open the discussion right. of some really inside the industry situations yeah. and what you would actually see when, because we don't just go there to buy tea. We stay with producers yes. and farmers. Right. We work with them very closely That's and right. we know a lot of issues. Yeah. And this, so the mag yeah. yeah, so the magazine gives us a chance to sort of open the lid on some of those issues that are just too complex for a short video. And um, and it also gives writing always gives you a better chance to uh, clear up the thought and put right. that in the more yeah. rational, logical way right. of stating a issue or a problem or share some uh, uh, yeah. reasoning and stuff. Yeah. So don't take our word for it. Check yeah. it out, and you'll see what we mean. It might be way easier if you do that. Cause, <laughs> cool. Absolutely. Yeah. And also for me, even though I'm a, I think that the biggest. Uh, thing that I learned in this trip is even though I am Chinese and a lot of times I was simplifying to say oh as a Chinese or something like that mm. to really travel in different regions and go to different even villages and towns. You were pretty to, remote. Yes. Right? Yes. Very remote locations. Yes. How people were travel, how people were living, their thoughts, their way of thinking things are so different, their cultural is so different. Like of course the very Simple level is the dialect we don't understand, but that's just no surprise there. But when we take a deeper look and those, sometimes when I see the slogans on the, on the buildings and stuff <laughs> in those villages, I was like, that reminds me of the 80s or 90s mm. in my hometown. Like, uh, because I come from the East Co uh, East, Eastern Coast? Yeah, East Coast Eastern of Coast. China. Yeah. So, what I know is really local to there. And the mm. more I see of China, I realize that uh, talking about China being big is uh, geographically right, but also it means a lot more to me yeah. now. I think your point about the billboards, everybody uh, who's traveled, even Westerners, whenever we travel, that's something I always notice too, probably you guys too. When you go to a new place, that's one thing that lets you know you're in a new culture. The way the billboards <clears throat> are phrased or just the way things are approached differently is sometimes shocking. Yeah. So even for Jen, when she just travels across China, she experienced that. And that was interesting to me too because, mm -hmm. of course, it's a big country. But we have a tendency with YouTube and Twitter and all the hyper-connectivity we have to think, oh, the world is shrinking and small. And of course, that's true to a degree. Mm -hmm. But culture is still culture. It doesn't change because uh, because YouTube exists and because Twitter exists for, for a year or two or ten. It takes yeah. time. So and sometimes when we see the scratch of this stuff, when we dig down and uh, right. look closer, it's actually the totally the other picture we're seeing. So right. yeah. um, that's something very fun for me. And me too. <laughs> <coughs> uh, still coffee. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a cut, so I'm going to start here. And something wait, else. Wait, wait, wait. Anyway. I was moving. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and something else that's fun for us is getting out in front of you folks, which we're going to be doing again this spring in Toronto. We have a tea seminar, tea tasting seminar coming up, which is going to be awesome. Mm. It's talking about black tea. Yeah, I know it sounds boring to many people, but I think black tea is a, a familiar stranger. Right. Like it's kind of like the acquaintance, somebody you never got to know deeply. Um, and maybe it's even because you kind of don't like them a little bit, but you just want to be polite. But black tea is something that is really underexplored by tea yeah. lovers in the West. I think because it's the tea that goes in tea bags. Mm. This is not a good reason to pull out your hate on for black tea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not to mention this workshop is not just about the black tea. Mm. We're using black tea as an example to showcase our point. And because black tea is the most familiar tea to many of people, I think it would be easier for people to understand what we're talking about, yeah, which is definitely. about 
process. And like I always say, what you taste from the tea majorly come from the process. It's not the terroir, it's not the cultivar, yep. it is the process. And this is the topic. We kind of have to do that face to face while we're tasting the same thing mm -hmm. at the same time. So uh, in this seminar, we want to brew up some tea and special for us, even though we're a Chinese tea company, we're going to taste the uh, We're going teas. global. <laughs> yes. We're going global. We're going to grab black teas from all over the world, which I'm super excited to do because it's yes. super interesting. Yeah, and to compare, despite that, what are the elements you taste from mm -hmm. uh, this tea that comes from the process? Mm -hmm. What process make that to have this fruitiness? What happens in the leaves to give this black tea that, uh, that bite Maybe you that like? that bite or that crispy edge right? or... Yes, mm. so it's uh, our uh, advanced course, but also a starting course to help people understand Mm, how should I say, decoding the taste. Yeah, I think how... it's going to be a great course for uh, beginners and experts alike. Mm. Um, I think a lot of experts get so hung up in what those things like terroir and uh, cultivar, um, they kind of, they get, you get through the process and you're kind of eager to get on with these sort of advanced things, cultivar and terroir, but really you cannot spend too much time on process. It's, I don't know, I'm just picking a number, but 80% of what you're tasting Absolutely. is coming from the process. It's so, definitely the major factor yeah. in that. And, and if you're a beginner, it's going to be a great way to start by focusing on the right thing and learning what, what, those, what those processing elements, how they come through in the taste. So you're going to have a really great start. You won't have to be relearning. I think it's right. really great. Absolutely, because a lot of people ask me when we were tasting tea, oh, how do you know this tea, tea uh, was a little bit over roasted? How do you know why this tea is under oxidized or was that uh, the uh, I was totally drying? mystified by those comments when we first <laughs> yeah. got started and she's just saying those. I'm like, but uh, with practice, it's definitely right. something you can pull out. Absolutely. There's no mysterious like magic around it. It's just the practice and knowing what the relationship between mm -hmm. the process and the taste. So that would be a really fun thing to do in the spring, Canadian spring though. <laughs> That's right, in the Canadian spring, that'll be coming up. So stay tuned, uh, check out our newsletter, even subscribe to the channel and you'll, you'll, you'll know about it. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you will know about it. <laughs> So that about wraps things up for today. Those are the things we wanted to share with you. And uh, you may have noticed we didn't spend much time talking about the tea. Don't worry. Um, I'm going to do a tasting video on this tea. It is, uh, it's definitely uh, merits it. So stay tuned for that. He cannot talk when he is brewing. I know, I'm to <laughs> total collapse. So anyway, stay tuned for that. And uh, oh yeah, of course. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel. Click that thumbs up button. There's a little bell right beside it. Uh, so you'll be notified whenever we put new videos out. Bunch of links in the description like we mentioned. Always and, check the description box. And until next time. Keep steaming. <laughs> Was that cheesy? <laughs> yeah. And the mean coronavirus. Yeah, coronavirus is gonna have an impact on your high-end handmade tea. Did you know that? It's gonna be awful. Do you like your voice? Oh, too bright, wow. Oh no, in the picture. Get out of the picture. That's right. Your notebook is in Oh, we're the testing picture. the sound too, so I'm gonna talk continually. Good thing I was talking with me and your voice earlier. Now I'm talking to check for dropouts, so I don't wanna have any pauses, because a pause might hide a dropout, so I'm gonna try and talk continually with almost no breathing, but I have little breaths or else I might die. Oh. So anyway, I'm talking, 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 and now I'm gonna sing a song. That's the middle of the song. I did it start at the beginning. Um, how does it start again? Young girl, young girl, young girl, young girl, pair of the young girl, tigers, lao hu, young girl, lao hu, young girl, lao hu, powder, kwai, powder, kwai, eager male, ardo, eager male, no, eager male, ardo, eager male, way, boy. Oh, has doesn't have it actually. 一个没有耳朵, 一个没有微博, that means WTF in Chinese. I think that's enough to test. <laughs>